Welcome to our Hub Identification class. We are here to educate you on what God has given us in nature. Uh, in the beginning, God created heavens and earth. And in verse 31 of uh, Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says that everything was perfect. And uh, because of sin, everything changed. The order of things changed. And you realize that God now I was having different kinds of people who tries to restore this, uh, this pattern. And so God, so God actually gives the best. He sent his son to come and teach and educate. To restore that which was lost. And that is why if we don't come to this nearness of the plan of God, we will not have peace. We will not have life. We will not have health. Everywhere there are people who are crying for something that they have not. People are praying for something that will give them mastery over sin. We are living in a world that is full of evil. We have the lawyers are actually uh, creating injustice. Yet they are supposed to give justice. The farmers are creating problems. That they are supposed to solve the agricultural problems. The scientists are creating more chaos, yet they are supposed to be problem solvers. The doctors are supposed to give health, yet they create more problems. It is because we have gone away from the definite plan of God that he has put in the, in the Garden of Eden. The more we change from that pattern, we want to behave the way we want, we will never achieve that which God wanted us to achieve. Diseases of the Israelites were gotten by following the plan of the, of the, the health standards and plans of the Egyptians. And that's why God tells them in Deuteronomy chapter 28 that if you shall diligently hearken unto my laws and my uh, and, and my statutes, then I shall not put the diseases that I placed upon the Egyptians. The diseases of the Egyptians are actually found in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And verses 22, you find hemorrhoids there. You find itchiness of the skin. You have the fungal infections there. You have the candidas there. You go to verses 28 you have more of this cancerous source, the cancer in the tumor. You go to verses 35, you have the arthritis, you have the heart diseases, you have the Lyme's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, and you go to verses 61, you find a lot of problems of mental problem, neurological diseases, autism, autoimmunity, and the problem is just there. Nothing that is happening today has never been before. In Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verses 9 says, That which has been will be, and there is nothing new under the sun. The only safety is to run to God. I want to try my best to educate people and to try my best to practice healthy living standards. Dressing code. How are we dressing? Are we exposing our extremities? Do we know that that affects our heart, our health? In fact, the heart health. Women that exposes their uh, extremities are prone to have a problem with the backache. And they are prone to have a problem with their hearts. They are prone to have menstrual problems. They are prone to develop difficulties, even in fertility. Even men. Tight clothes that tighten that tightens the organs make them not to receive enough oxygen. And also what we watch today, we are living in a world that people watch uh, movies that makes our system to be very, very excited. People are watching action movies and laugh today. I wonder what are we laughing for? Because this is creating a generation that is going to be very violent and criminally uh, uh, inscripted in their minds. Parents are allowing their children to watch uh, pornographic movies and even nude 
movies and we see it today in the media. No one is taking counsel to know whether these things are bad or wrong. They affect our mentality. They affect what we are going to eat. They affect what we are going to wear. You look at people who are watching football today. The air style, the dressing style. And that is not good according to God's, God's, according to God's eyes. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, that enmity, uh, uh, that uh, friendliness to the world is enmity to God. And anyone who demonstrates and manifests the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the, life, the pride of life, the lust of, uh, of the eyes, is an enemy with God. And so we are suffering from day to day. Financial crisis is almost everywhere because we have gone out of the divine plan of God. No one is longing and yearning to produce his own crops. And so we have fertilizers introduced into the system to produce food. Yet the system of organic farming was very, very profound and effective in production of foods. People are not learning to grow trees. And all the indigenous trees, the local trees, the exotic trees are almost gone. It is because we have not taken counsel to know what God wants for us. God is looking for only one person who is going to make a decision to follow that divine food. What does it mean to live a life in this world? Is it the food that you eat? Is it the money you're scrambling for? I tell you today, most people are, uh, are actually knowing that they are parenting their children, yet they are not parenting. They think that if they give their child the, uh, the, the bread and butter, the milk, the eggs, the good food, they, they, we, we call it so, or we see it so, and give them uh, a, a good uh, smart screen, uh, flat screen, and they could watch the cartoons and everything. We are parenting. In fact, we are giving them, offering them as a sacrifice to the devil. And then they grow up seeing people that are not obeying God and are not very uh, reverential to the word of God. And then they will eat whatever they want. Later on, we develop diseases that are difficult to treat. Most parents give uh, foods that are not, uh, are not remineralizing the body. You know sweets, the biscuits, the quinches. They give nothing to the body. Instead, they make the brain to be uh, hyper, uh, hyperactive. And then you find children are having autism. The Bowell system is affected. So we are coming to a time that restoration of all things have to be followed. We have just some time to point the, the nail on the hood. And people need to change. Because if we don't follow this plan, we shall never be saved. We shall be suffering from day in and day out. But the, true, uh, the, 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 the truth is that when we follow the plan of God that is set in the beginning, we will have health. We, it doesn't matter which disease you have, you will be healed in the name of Jesus Christ if you follow the laws of Jesus Christ in the world. Now, let us look today, uh, we are looking at papaya. This is a common plant that we find in homes, and it is grown everywhere. I prefer we use the, the indigenous, local, tall, or even the branched uh, purpose or papayas, they have strong chemicals, phytochemicals that help you. It is known as a nature chemical plant, a nature chemo plant, because when you take it in and someone has gone for a, uh, for a radiotherapy or chemotherapy, it is able to balance uh, and eliminate the effects that have, da have been done by the chemos. What the chemos done is that it's, it does it kills most of the good cells. It doesn't. It is not selective. It just destroy every cells. So someone who goes for chemos, chemos can never cure, but it is a palliative care. The best cure is God's divine plan. That is the purple of very organic, original. The many benefits of papaya hold due to high content of vitamin A, B, and C. Proteolytic enzymes like papain and 
crimopapain, which have antiviral, antifungal, and antibacterial properties. Carica papaya can be used for treatment of a numerous disease like warts, corns, sinuses, eczema, cutaneous uh, tubercles, glandular tumors, blood pressure, dyspepsia, constipation, amenorrhea, general debility. It also expels worms and stimulates reproductive organs. The leaves are used for colic, fever, beriberi, asthma, and cancer. And papaya leaves are used traditionally in treatment like jaundice, malaria, dengue, immunodulatory and antiviral activities. And the leaves have medicinal properties like anti-inflammatory, hypoglycemic, anti-fertility, and abortifacient and hepatoprotective, wound healing, anti-hypertensive, and anti-tumor activity. So papaya is loaded from the leaves. We get the medicinal properties, like for example, the leaves is ant as anti-tumor effect. In what sense? If you take it in uh, together with a plant called sour soap, but even singly, you can just use it. Uh, you make a juice of one glass of it and take it in twice a day. You are able to uh, to retard the supply of ATP to the cancer or the tumor cells. That leaf can be used for most complications that we have mentioned here. For diabetes, you take that, it's able to balance and normalize your sugar. And uh, uh, for, uh, for, for fever, if you have dengue fever, you take the, the leaf decoction or the juice made from the leaves, it will be able to help you with the dengue fever. Even malaria, even typhoid, amoebosis, and brucellosis. And then you go to the, to the papaya fruit itself. When it is green, it oozes out some, uh, some white stuff from it. Now that white stuff uh, is a protolytic, as protolytic enzyme. Protolytic means that it, eats, it can eat proteins. Uh, it breaks down proteins in a, in a quicker way. And that's why most of the time we apply it on the tumor you can collect that, uh, the, 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 that whitish sap and then apply it with some herbs and apply it on, your, on the tumor. Uh, and uh, the, the, the popo, when it is not ripe, it contains a lot of papain that breaks down the congested uh, chest that also uh, break down the protein molecules that are, uh, are free radicals in the system. It is able to help you lower the weight. If you are taking papain, your weight will be low because a lot of protein is broken down. And uh, most of the time, the outer green part is always crushed and then mixed with uh, maybe garlic or, uh, or comfrey and then applied on a tumor to pull it out and break down the protein molecule within that tumor. Yes, yeah, so uh, if you go to the, to the roots, very good for for fever, more so the, uh, the yellow fever, the root of, of, uh, of papaya and uh, the, leaves of, uh, the leaves of guavas and the leaves of, uh, of lemons or oranges. Very, if you make a, a decoction from that, you give someone having fever, dengue fever or even yellow fever, they are able to, uh, to break that, uh, that, that problem and be set free, uh, set free. Yeah, so that is how it is. The papaya leaves are used as a tonic for heart disease, treatment for stomach ache, and have antioxidant, anti-cancer, antiseptic, and analgesic properties. It is, uh, the dried leaves are known as blood purifiers and taken as tonic, uh, so it means it's, it purifies the leaves. If you dry the leaves, it you concentrate the medicinal properties. The papaya leaf tea is used to treat obesity and help in losing weight, and it acts against chronic indigestion, high blood pressure, and atherosclerosis, weakening of the heart. Daily consumption of leaves help to prevent malaria. Aqueous extract of papaya leaves consumption also increases platelet or white blood cells and neurotrophies uh, count. 
especially in dengue patients. Dried leaves have been indicated, indicated in sickle cell anemia management. Now, if you, uh, I know of two remedies that are good for the, for the sickle cell anemia. If you take them, the person can never go on a crisis for even two weeks. That is the dried papaya leaves and the uh, indica edulis. Induca edulis plant, you take the, 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 the stem and able to control someone with a sickle cell anemia. It expands the, uh, the red blood cells, surface area, and they come to a normal shape so that you cannot go on a crisis. Its roots can be used as a medicine for renal and urinary bladder problems. If someone is urinating blood because of uh, cystitis, you give the root decoction. Roots is chewed and swallowed for cough, bronchitis, and other respiratory disease. The reason why we are tackling these natural remedies is because drugs do not cure. They will never cure you. They just change the form of the disease. They suppress the, the disease. And so that later on, the disease can manifest itself in another form. Uh, so papaya also acts as an abortifacient diuretic antifungal it has antifungal activity also checks irregular bleeding from uterus and piles uh, the rules are used in traditional medicine for treatment of diseases as it could be a good source of drug for birth control in males uh, the roots are used in treatment of gastroenteritis urethritis otitis media typhoid fever and wound infection in all this, we use the root decoction, and in the ear, we apply drops, one drop on both the ears. It also helps in treating infectious wounds, pneumonia, internal heat, stomach, no, uh, stomach noise, and strange movement in the body, abdominal pains, and a host of other diseases. The bark and twig tissues are found to possess anti-tumor and pesticidal properties. So it is just uh, a very uh, useful plant that we need to have in our gardens. The seeds from the ripe papaya is used for controlling worms. If you are doing parasitic cleanse, uh, which is very easy, you can use the papaya. Uh, the, for parasitic cleanse, this, this person needs to, number one, stop from eating uh, the sugary foods. You may be going through a salad, a fruit salad uh, or, a or a vegetable salad. And then in the morning, the first thing you begin with is taking, chewing uh, the papaya seeds, about a teaspoon. And then after 30 minutes, you drink water made from boiled pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds you boil in water for every two tablespoons, you boil in one cup of water. And you make a strong, a strong decoction out of that and take it in. And uh, after five hours, you also take again the, the papaya seeds. For three days, on the third day, what you do is uh, either you be in a calm place and get one liter of water and do an enema with it. And then let the person retain that for about five minutes. And then after five minutes, let him release uh, the, the milk. Or let the person sit, sit on milk, five gallon, uh, five liters of, of milk, and then you sit on it, be very calm. And then after five minutes, stand up very fast. The worms will be uh, left in the milk because they feed a lot in milk. Uh, the worms feed very fast on milk and also uh, the sugary stuff. So if you want a, a parasitic cleanse, that is what you do. Use the papaya, the pumpkin seeds, and also you use the, uh, you, you can use, you, you go on a, on a fruit and vegetable fast for three days. It shall have helped you. Most of the people suffer from uh, most of the people suffer from mental diseases because of parasites in the brain, in the colon. Parkinson's disease, Gaylurex disease, multiple sclerosis, 
because of the worms or the fluids that feed on the neurons. So that is all we have about popo. So sometimes take popo to help you to protect your system.